Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, that's right, and it's show number 175. We're actually in our fifth year, I think, that is. Or is that six? Let me see. 2006, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's our fifth year. Soon to be entering our sixth year here in January. That'll be all right. Uh, and it's show number 175. And among today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe, the family name of the day is Conlon. The Irish county of the month is Roscommon. Uh, searching for McMahon, Smith, and McKiernan. Uh, curious news, the coldest Irish in a while. Number five, the webpage of the month, Online Dictionary and Origins. A curious note, how the Irish postman predicts. And number seven, the one-minute podcast, Mogilamar. Mogilamar. Is that it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's our Irish song for the uh, week over on the Irish Song Channel. Don't forget to see that. Penelope's doing this one again. It's really good. Hey, that's a reminder to let everybody know we've got this podcast which comes in two forms, uh, uh, two broadcast feeds, actually. They're both on available on iTunes or on my webpage. The first one is an, uh, the regular audio podcast, just like any other radio show or any other podcast, audio only. The second way is an enhanced podcast where you get the same audio, but as you're listening to the sound, you get to see uh, pictures that I put up. There's still pictures with links you can click on to go sometimes to things we're talking about. So that's the enhanced podcast, and uh, all you need is QuickTime or I think it's uh, iTunes on your computer, and uh, you'll be able to do that. So uh, you might think about it. we got a, quite a few people doing that now, so I, I wanted to let you know we've got both things available. And... Uh, Let me see what's happening this week at the cafe. I've added a uh, frequently asked questions page to the website, and I've started with the top questions that could be answered. And the address is, uh, well, click on the head school and go to FAQ uh, up there in the, at the top, once you click on Head School on our main page, then go to FAQ, which means Frequently Asked Questions, and uh, you'll get to see that. I might change that from time to time as I get new questions. Uh, number two, I'm also turning the entire website at irishroots.com into a Head School format. I've added and expanded pages and will continue to do so for several months. So I've got the link to that Head School page on the blog. Go take a look. And, uh, hey, Over the Mountain is a song I sang on the Irish podcast last week, and we've got more coming up. Oh, it's the One Minute Song podcast, and uh, we're covering uh, uh, what what the song is going to be over on our, our song podcast today. I thought I'd give you a little, uh, a little preview of it to let you know... Uh, what some Shan Nose might sound like. So uh, here it is without uh, any more delay. Penelope gives us another one right now. Beam shop on our birch cock low. A quick or 
Oh, there it was, just as it came over the wires from Ireland, the way we recorded it, and uh, Penelope's a good one, and she's also given us a real fine interview on sessions and uh, what the music life might be like over there in Ireland, especially around County Clare, and uh, I do recommend it. There's more than just music. It's a little bit about the people and the surrounding, and uh, take a listen today if you can. Oh, well, now it's time for the book of the month, and uh, we picked County Roscommon this time, and that's uh, based on the County Roscommon Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes book. I've got a link to that book with more information on the blog, and that's uh, that's actually the first of the little county spiral-bound books I ever did. And I did. A fellow wrote in and just said he wanted some information, and that started the whole thing rolling. And that's part of our... Uh, a uh, 34-volume set on uh, Irish family history and genealogy, and that's the volume on Roscommon. And let's take a look, and what do we see here? The most numerous names in the 19th century, which, of course, is the century most people came over. Uh, if we take a look in that Roscommon book, they give names like Kelly, of course, uh, McDermott, Byrne, Reagan, Flanagan, uh, Connor, McDonough, Quinn, Murray, Brennan, Higgins, Toey, Tui, uh, Kenny, Flynn, you know, and you can spell all those names so many different ways. You can substitute a Y for an I or a, a, a OU for a O. Uh, it's, 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 you know the story. And you know that most of those Irish names can ha- have the Mac or O before them, and that can be dropped or added at will. Now, you just can't interchange the Mac and O. I mean, that happened on rare occasions, but you can't slip a Mac on the front of an O name. That didn't happen too often, just now now and every rare again. Uh, additionally, many old Irish names were translated or mistranslated into English from the original Gaelic. So I think, what was it in my family? The first name I found like that was Cunine, and a fellow told me over there in Ireland that... Uh, Cunine could have been translated into rabbit, so you could find his name written in the records as Cunine, and then later on you could find his name written in the, in the records as rabbit. Yeah, and my dad always wondered if we were re- related to the famous Eddie Rabbit because of that, but you know, I never found out. Maybe he'll be listening and he'll let us know. Uh, and I've got the context, Kent contents of the book listed on the blog and of course we include national resource lists and the local resource list and uh, uh, the complete returns from the census of 1659 showing the method of spelling family names and place names at that time in history and then we've also got that special section on coat of arms and genealogical notes and those are arms connected in some way to the county and their families And then we also have a little bit on finding locations and a county map. Right along with uh, uh, an index of place names, ancient and modern. And that might help you if you're looking for place names or if you're looking for duplicate names in different counties. Ooh, what's next? Hey, coming up later, I'm going to be asking you if you'd be offering a friend a tagging or not. Or what exactly would that mean? Would it be a tap on the shoulder or a knock on the jaw? I don't know. We'll find out. Now, it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. 
Number one, William Hart of Pacifica, California. Your County Sligo, Ireland genealogy and family history notes uh, book has shipped. Number two, Alan Ross Ford of New South Wales. Welcome as a new member. Uh, and he's looking for details of his great great grandparents, Timothy and Ellen. And he says, then Nee Leonard McMahon. And number three, uh, Dina Adams of Prairie Village, Kansas. Welcome as a new member. Searching for Smith and McKiernan. Number four, Barbara A. Stock of Tacoma Park. Your families of County Clare has shipped. Number five, Elaine Longford of Victoria, Australia. Your families of County Cary has shipped. Number six, Dorothy Fitzpatrick of Christmas, Florida. Your County Cork and County Cabin book has shipped. And number seven, Joanne Yates of Stoke on Trent in the UK. Your County Limerick, Ireland. Genealogy and Family History Notes has shipped. And uh, remember, you can also check out... Uh, some of the searches we've got listed online at irishroots.com. Just look over there in that left-hand column for the subject you're after, and uh, and you can click on it. And that reminds me, it's time to say a big thank you, like we do each week, to each and every member and each and every one of you that's ordered a book, because without you, these, possi- these, these podcasts and the books would not be possible. Uh, so I do appreciate it, and we need all the members we can get, no matter they're big or small. Uh, we sure do welcome it all, folks. Well, it's time now for the family name of the day, and that's going to be Conlon. Uh, now, our member spells it C-O-N-L-O-N, and it's in honor of member Kathleen Fulcher, and she's researching her father's family of Conlon, and she believes that her great-grandfather, Michael Dylan Conlon, was born in Boyle County, Roscommon, about 1890 or so. Now, if we take a, a real quick look at uh, related spellings of the name, you can see that uh, Connellan is a name that was sometimes turned into Conlon, as well as names like uh, Connolly and Conla. Uh, Conlon, Conlon, uh, with a L-E-N or a L-I-N ending, and uh, Connelly. All those names could be confused because, well, I guess it's just because you got to see it to beginning and some L's in the middle. I don't know, but that's the way it works. And we found those variant spelling uh, groups, uh, number 314, 317, 319, and 2166 is where we found a lot of those variant spellings at. And that's from the Guide to the Variant Spellings of Irish Family Names. Uh, I've got a link to that on the blog. Now, the history of the name, we'll just take a quick look. We find that the name is used as a variant spelling of Connellan in uh, a lot of instances, and the main location for the name in more modern times is County Roscommon, and it's also found in Mayo and Sligo, and you can also find a splattering uh, throughout Ireland in a lot smaller numbers. Now, I told you about the spellings. Uh, you even find some, some uh, variant spellings like the name of Size, and uh, Kennelly spelled with a K, and McInnelly, or McInnelly. They're all given to the guide to various spellings of Irish surnames as uh, sometimes interchanged, so uh, you got to keep your eye open. Now, we also find uh, Mac Conlina. For fan, fans of Irish family names, the family name of Mac Conlina is given as an obsolete in the Tribes and Customs of High Fiacra by O'Donovan. And there's also an obituary of Redmond P. Conlon in the journey, Journal of the Irish American Historical Society, in case you're looking for that particular name. And, uh, you know, we're also going to take a look at the uh, Irish family coats of arms in the Irish Book of Arms, and I've got a link to it on the blog. And we'll find that the exact spelling, spelling of Conlon is not given in the Irish Book of Arms, uh, of course, don't be surprised. A lot of Irish families were never included because uh, before the coming of the Irish Free State, when the Irish gave the the native Irish their own arms, it was the Queen that or the or the Crown that granted arms in uh, in Ireland, according to the Chief Herald. So uh, your family might not have been associated with those arms, even though we like to use them today. And that's fine because, after all, it's been a long time, and uh, it is a tie to the old country. So it's all right. But just remember. There's always a story behind the story, and that's that one. And coming up later in this episode, Michael Gallagher made an accurate prediction, and I wonder how. We're going to tell you in just a little bit. We'll tell you what that prediction was, too. So all you Gallaghers listen in, 
Ooh, up next, we've got another source. Well, now I've checked into the free master online index of Irish family names at irishroots.com. And we did a quick check and we had uh, 16 times we found the name listed in the books, at least that many. Uh, and we found it in the birth index of Ireland. And we found it in the Irish names and surnames by Patrick Wolf, And in the County Roscommon genealogy notes book. And the, also the Sligo and County Mayo Ireland genealogy and family history notes. That's volumes 23, 24, and 20 of our uh, 34 book set. And then we also found it in our book on Mac, Mick, and O names in the 17th to 20th century records. And that's a, really a book for people that like uh, Irish names and maybe even names that begin with Mac, Mick, and O and see how they were distributed and what uh, counties they came from and what counties they came in o over into America at and uh, in the very early days. It's very interesting. And uh, number seven, we also found it in Irish families on the California Trail, which is not too surprising because those Conlins, you know, they really got around. Uh, now, you can also search uh, your, your name in our free index online at irishroots.com. Just leave off the Mac or O, and it'll pull up everybody with and without that O in that listing. So take a shot. Oh, that means it's Around the World in Irish Ways, the web page and video of the month. Now we've got number one, Dancing in Ballygadareen. Balladareen. Oh, Ballahadareen. Uh, Roscommon, Ireland. Uh, take a look on it. I got a link on the blog. It's a YouTube on, uh, it's on YouTube. And number two, uh, Visit Roscommon video. And that covers quite a few spots in uh, Roscommon with some very pretty pictures. So, you might want to take a look at that if you want to remember Roscommon or think about what Roscommon might have been like. That's a good thing to see. And number three, uh, Oxford Dictionaries Online, and you can set it to U.S. English or World English. And I guess if you're in the U.S., you'd set it to U.S. English. And what, everybody else would say World English? I don't know. Or maybe that, should, that means English English if it's World English. Uh, I don't know, but got a link on the blog and another story in a second. And number four, the history of the Irish Guinness Brewery. And that's uh, uh, got a link on the blog to that. That's always interesting. And I think they're celebrating, uh, I think they're celebrating an anniversary. Hmm. And we've got our video shorts up on genealogy and history. And I'm going to be doing another series here in the next, maybe I'll start off the new year with that since we're so close now. And hey, Merry Christmas to everybody in case I don't see you sooner. Uh, and uh, gosh, what are we moving into now? Uh, that takes care of all of the videos, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And that's going to bring us up to the everybody's favorite segment, Curious News and Notes from Ireland Today. And uh, boy, they've been having rare old times in Ireland now. I think even, uh, I think I've been warmer than uh, Ireland for sure. And I've been traveling up north. That's, uh, that's a rare thing, I think. Well, here it comes up now. Everybody's favorite, Curious News and Notes. <laughs> What have we got here? There's going to be a lot about the weather. Number one, snow and ice of late in Ireland has been uh, really sort of remarkable. My friends in County Clare have been digging around and sliding out of snow banks. And gosh, one girl I know said she had to dig out of a four foot uh, snow slide. That's terrible. And schools have been closed, which, of course, the kids won't like that at all now, will they? Uh, number two, uh, Guinness is still the favorite draft beer in Irish pubs. But do you know what the most popular bottled beer is in the Irish pubs? Well, they say it's Bulmer's. Now, I didn't know that. That's very interesting, too. Must have must be an import, huh? Number three, Northern Ireland has its coldest November winter night since 1919. And uh, Arma, Arma Observatory recorded a, a negative 7.8 degrees centigrade. And uh, gosh, they may break that tonight or tomorrow night unless it started to warm up already. Uh, number four, it seems that a county Donegal postman predicted all these freezing temperatures weeks in advance, which is remarkable. Michael Gallagher, 
bases his predictions on the animals and the birds that he observes. Now, which in this case, uh, they were very agitated, agitated, he says. And I guess being a postman, he gets to walk around and see quite a few. And he might have those, meet all those little friends on the road and see those squirrels or rabbits are running. Uh, got a link to that story on the blog out of the Independent. Number five, the online Oxford English Dictionary is a gigantic compilation. And it's going to give many more words with Irish origins in it. Uh, uh, that Irish origins, but they became English words. Uh, words like Alana and a store and Tagine, they're increasingly being given uh, in that dictionary. So that's a little bit of history you might want to hold on to. And of course, if you have paid any attention to the early sheet music in the 20th century in America, and I imagine uh, uh, Canada and Australia would have that too, words like a store and Eileen a store and, and Alana. Uh, you're going to find them quite a bit. They're endearing words. But now tagine, that's another word that they're going to include in the next edition, this article said. And uh, tagine would be a glass of spirits, perhaps a small glass of spirits. And uh, I think you know what spirits might be. It'll take the frost off you in on, on a cold winter day, and they might be needing some of that right now. Got a link to that story on the blog from the theirishtimes.com. And number six, the age for getting married is still increasing just a wee bit in Ireland, and there's also more civil ceremonies too, rather than the old uh, church ceremonies, which is a big change. And one third of the brides are older than the groom, and grooms are 33.4 years old, and brides are uh, 31.3 years on average. I uh, got that story out of the Irish Times Online, and uh, I've got a link to it on the blog. So, well, the holidays are upon us, and we're busy, and we're just uh, we're trying to get all kinds of things done. So uh, I appreciate you listening. Contact me with anything you might want to, and uh, that's it. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>